Joe, Joe Mitchell is a retired executive recruiter and former program director for the World Affairs Council. He spends his time reading with his dog, riding his bicycle, and spending time with his wife. He's a longtime San Diegan, lives in Mission Hills. The title of my speech is the peace speech, and I'll be speaking five to seven minutes. Okay. Just days ago was the 60th anniversary of John F. Kennedy giving the peace speech at American University on June 10th, 1963. At the height of the Cold War, after the months after the Cuban Missile Crisis, Kennedy called for direct negotiations with the Soviet Union. In the soaring rhetoric that Kennedy is remembered, he envisioned a peace, not of a Pax Americana, enforced by the American weapons of war, not a peace of the grave or the security of the slave, but a genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life worth living, the kind that enables men and nations to grow and hope and build a better life for their children, not, mer not merely American children, but a peace for all men and women and a peace for all time. Further, he said, I realize that the pursuit of peace is not, a dramatic, not as dramatic as the pursuit of war. And frequent, frequently, he warns of the, the, the words of the pursuer, to, the words of the pursuer fall on deaf ears, but we have no more urgent task. Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev hailed Kennedy's speech as the greatest speech of an American president since Franklin Roosevelt. The Soviet newspapers printed the speech in its entirety. By that October, the U.S. and Soviet Union had signed a limited test ban treaty. For Kennedy, the specter of nuclear war, which the United States and the Soviet Union had come within a hair's breadth during the Cuban Missile Crisis, made the pursuit of peace an imperative. Yet it was a path that put him in direct odds, perhaps fatally, with his own national security, military industrial establishment. Three days before Kennedy's peace speech, I was with my second grade class standing on the, the street a little more than a mile from here as we watch Kennedy's motorcade and that uh, the, that in the his limousine as he drove to San Diego State. It was a special time in America then. It's hard to convey what the the energy and the thought was, but there was an enthusiasm. We had been barely twenty years since we emerged as the greatest nation after the Second World War. We had the highest standard of living, and we were on an upward trajectory. We saw ourselves as the good guys in white hats, just like all those cowboy movies and TV shows. Jack Kennedy embodied the image of American enthusiasm. And when I came home that day from school in November and saw on the news that Kennedy had been shot, my immediate reaction was grief and anger, grief at the loss that although I was only seven years old, I didn't fully understand, but anger because the school had thought that I needed to be protected from knowing what happened. The world changed with the assassination of Jack Kennedy. America lost its innocence and the public be became increasingly skeptical that optimism has, had faded. We have become mired in seemingly countless wars, supporting undemocratic leaders and spending 
squandering thousands of lives and trillions of dollars on dubious adventures that we that leave we leave in, that, that when we leave we leave countries in rubble the progressive era of roosevelt and kennedy has slipped away from us the funding for the military wars continues unabated as my classmates and i stood waiting for the president to drive by one of my schoolmates asked is is there a, a secret service guy on the on the tower that's that's across the street from us and we all looked and there was and yet five months later there was not a single service agent not a single sheriff not a single military person in all of Dealey Plaza. Today, 60 years, like 60 years ago, we are in the precipice of a war with a nuclear power, and no one seems to be sounding the alarm. Instead of calling for peace, as Jack Kennedy so boldly did, our government refuses to talk has personally and repeatedly denigrated President Vladimir Putin and called for his ouster. We have avoided all communications and rebutted all efforts to hold bilateral talks. Yeah. And I lost my... While homelessness and drug abuse, symptoms of the despair that's, that, that's taken this, over this country, that ravaged the streets of America, and the average American's lot declines, our leaders continue to, to take us to the precipice. In a statement that reflects the sentiments that grips both our, our political parties, a senator applauded the $120 billion spent in Ukraine as the best money ever spent because we are killing Russians. When Jack Kennedy came to office in 1961, he said, let us not negotiate out of fear, but let us never fear to negotiate. Let both sides explore the problems that, that unite us instead of belaboring the problems that divide us. In his speech, peace speech, peace speech Kennedy reminded us of, of, of what the US, the United States and Russia share as fundamental. We all inhabit a small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future and we are all mortal. Thank you. Yeah.